I've thought about telling this story for quite a while now. And first and foremost, I want to inform you from the very beginning that everything I'm about to say is true. I will not be adding anything for the sake of the story, nor will I be using stupid, stereotypical buzzwords to make this seem more terrifying. All I'll be doing is telling the truth, and that's all I want to do. So, I'll start from the beginning and give a little background. When I was a kid, I began realizing I had a little insight on what was going to happen before it actually did. And now by that I mean sometimes I knew what some kid in the class would say next whilst bothering the teacher. Or I knew when the phone was going to ring. Just that sort of thing. I didn't think much of it as a sweet 10 or 11 year old. I just saw it as pretty cool, I guess. Then came on the feelings of, I've been here before, whenever I went to new places. And I could never remember when, though. I began getting deja vu regularly, which would last maybe 10 or 15 seconds. And I'd usually sit back in awe and quietly mouth everything everyone was saying. As I got older, I began referring to it as a sensitivity I had. And it wasn't until I was about 14, I realized I also had this sensitivity to spirits. Now I live in Ireland, so during the famous Celtic Tiger, my parents went all out on a beautiful 200 year old house. I mean, knocking down sections, rebuilding, re-roofing, repainting, everything. We got to pick our own rooms, and I chose the attic. It was terrifying at first, but once we rebuilt it a bit, painted it, refloored it, and all that good stuff, it looked pretty fantastic. The only part of the room that still bothered me was the small hatch in the ceiling, up to a small boiler room. Just looking at it gave me a bad feeling from the beginning, so I had placed my wardrobe under it and put stuffed animals on top to cover it up so I wouldn't have to see it. The first night in that room was quite intense. All through the night I heard scratches and banging coming from the boiler room. I put it down to being new house noises. Until I heard footsteps run across the ceiling. Over and over again. See this happened every night. And I remember mentioning it to my father. He laughed and said, Unless there's a four foot tall person living up there, you're not hearing anything followed by the famous, you're probably dreaming. But I knew I wasn't. This did freak me out a lot, but surprisingly, I just got used to it, and I ignored it. I began noticing strange things happening in my room, too. You know, little things. My wardrobe doors would be open. I'd close them and go downstairs, come back up, and they'd be open again. Probably just a slant in my floor, my father concluded. Ornaments around my room would be in different positions. That sort of thing. And then came the feeling of being watched. Watched very carefully. For every second I spent in that room, I could feel someone or something's eyes burning into me. It was uncomfortable to say the least, but I tried to get on with things. And it wasn't long until I began getting night terrors. I saw horrible things, things I would not like to ever see again. However, the fact that they were dreams made it less traumatizing, albeit slightly disturbing. My mother told me she would hear wails in the middle of the night. She'd get out of bed to find me standing outside my door, screeching and crying. She asked me what was wrong, but I'd simply shake my head and lower my chin to my chest. I don't remember any of the crying. When I was told I was doing this, I was pretty freaked out. Something like that had never happened to me before, and I began feeling a bit down being in that house, specifically my bedroom. Each night I'd find myself thinking about how sad I was, which again was odd for me, because I never had any problems. I was always a really happy kid. However, it was to get worse, and I'll never forget the night it all went downhill. 
It was just a regular night, I guess, and I had gone to bed and fallen asleep. I woke suddenly in the middle of the night. Within a second of waking up, I was overcome with terror and dread. I felt something watching me again, only this time, I saw it. I slowly turned my head to the left of me, and there it was, a dark black figure staring at me. Its head was cocked forward from its body looking down at me. I thought I was dreaming, so I sat up, blinked, and I rubbed my eyes. But no such luck. It was still there, only it looked as shocked as I was. It jolted back, perhaps when it realized I could see it, and it slithered down the side of my bed, across the bottom of my bed, and disappeared into the darkness. I couldn't do anything, only sit there in terror and weep quietly. I'd never been so scared in my life. I stayed on the couch for a few days after that and avoided my bedroom completely. I changed after that night. I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. I was just a terrified mess. And it wasn't long before I decided enough was enough and braved the room once again. Due to sheer exhaustion, I managed to fall asleep on my bed for what felt like five minutes before waking abruptly. And it was there again, only this time its face was directly opposite of mine. This time, though, it was in broad daylight, as I had only managed to sleep at about 6am. I think it's fair to say... And I shat my pants a little. Now some time passed, and I'm not sure how, thinking back on it, but I did manage to brush all of this off, and I did continue to stay in that room. It was quiet for a while, but before long, I began waking with cuts on my body, slices in my skin, mostly on my back and shoulder blades. Each night, as I tried to sleep, I felt some invisible force clasp my neck. It got harder to breathe each night, and I became very depressed, finding myself sitting awake at all hours, knowing I was being watched, and I contemplated just ending my life. That bedroom, it became a pit of despair. Now, my father was, and still is to this day, very skeptical of me and my stories. My mother, well, not so much. She got frightened by what had been happening and insisted we call the parish priest. Typically Irish, I know. Although I'm not religious in any way, I sort of reached the stage of, screw it, I'll try anything. And so I went ahead with it. The priest called over. He read whatever it is that they read in situations like these, splashed holy water everywhere, and stuck a cross he got from the Vatican in Rome up in the room. That wasn't enough for me. Since I wasn't religious, I felt it was hypocritical of me to believe that would work. So, I just moved rooms. Now, I'm still terrified of that attic, and I've only been in there for a few brief moments when I've had to be there. I just assumed that the attic was haunted, and I left it at that. The new room was okay. I was more or less fine for about a year. Still slightly traumatized, might I add. And I thought that was it. Until I moved into a new house for college. And it all started again. Now I moved towns for college and found a perfect house with some of my very good friends. I had hoped to put everything that happened in my hometown to rest. And I was very optimistic about my fresh start. I moved to a really historic city, and the house I live in now is about 150 years old. The first night, myself and my housemates stayed there. We were unsettled by scratching noises coming from the walls. We put it down to new house noises. I should have known better, right? And we just brushed it off. We ignored the nightly banging and scratching. And one day... I decided to bring it up due to something that I thought was a bit strange. I explained that I was in bed one night, trying to sleep when I felt my body jerking slightly, as if something was pulling on my quilt. 
I expected them to laugh, but one of my housemates sat straight up and explained the strange experience he had only nights before. He said he was in his room trying to fall asleep, and he had his feet hanging over the side of the bed. He said he was just asleep when something grabbed onto his foot. He said he pulled his legs up to his chest and lay there for a while, pretty shaken. And we all went a bit quiet then and just gazed around the house, getting more and more creeped out. But it wasn't long before shit hit the proverbial fan in the house. At 6 a.m. every morning, I heard a light wailing coming from one corner in my bedroom, and every morning I put my head to the wall to listen. Every time I called my housemates to hear it, it stopped. Typical, right? I think they were starting to think that maybe I was getting a bit crazy. It took a long time before they heard it as well, though. I was pretty relieved when they said the words, Oh yeah, yeah, I could hear it too. Because I was seriously beginning to question my sanity. There was then daily banging from the kitchen, switches flicking on and off and the likes and we just sort of laughed it off all the time. I knew something was up, though, when I saw the black figure again. I'd been sitting on the couch and could see into the kitchen from the corner of my eye. I happened to catch a glimpse of it, staring in at me. I looked over quickly, but it was gone. I ignored it and decided not to say anything. I didn't get too freaked out. Since, you know, I was kind of used to it at that point, I guess. But I lost it slightly when one of my housemates let something slip. You see, we were all at a party, and one of my housemates turned to me and said something along the lines of, Can you believe what our other housemates saw the other night? Now, I had no idea what he was talking about, so I confronted the other guy. He sighed and explained how he didn't want me to be scared and wasn't going to say anything, but went on to tell me how he saw a black figure in the bathroom. I wondered if it was the same black figure that I saw. We were all very wary in the house from then on. Then came the night it all went downhill. Again, it was only me and my housemate who had seen the black figure and the others had returned home for the weekend. We were both in the living room working on college stuff when we heard a bang. We both stopped and looked at each other with that, oh shit, look. We knew it was starting again, only this time it was much more intense. There was banging coming from all sides of the house. It was like someone was quickly moving around the entire house, banging the walls and stomping on the floor. Now this went on for a few minutes as we just sat there in terror. Then it stopped and the banging continued from just one area of the house. My room. We were kind of in that stage of nervously laughing and looking around. I'd been sitting on the couch and my housemate was sitting opposite me on a beanbag. He was saying something to me when his face dropped. He went completely white and just stared beyond my shoulder. I asked him what was wrong. All he said was that we needed to get out of that room now, and that I wasn't to sleep in my room tonight since the banging was still coming from there. And so I calmly asked him, what did he see? but he ignored me, just gathered our stuff, and began going into the other room. I stopped him and calmly asked again, What did you see? And he was looking past me again and explained how he saw a black figure sliding across the wall directly behind me. We both left that room instantly and locked ourselves into his, and we just sat there for a while in silence. Now I began thinking about all the freaky stuff that has gone on in my short lifespan. I began thinking about the significance of these black figures and began wondering if there were multiple black figures or if it was all the same one. The same black figure I woke up to that night 
years and years ago. That was when it dawned on me for the first time. Maybe it wasn't the houses that were haunted. Maybe I'm the one who was haunted. <laughs> 